Konnichiwa. Welcome to the Jandals in Japan podcast. Thanks for joining us today. We are Jandals live in Japan today, though I have to say I'm not at all Jandal ready. Are you ready for, for Jandals? No. It's been too cold here in Japan. It's been freezing cold. But today, finally, we have had a beautiful sunny day here in Fukushima and we still have no sakura. We still have no, no cherry blossoms. There's like one or two on the tree, like they're really struggling to come out. So, yes, hurry up and um, bloom, please. You know, they're like, I know, nearly a week late, I think, this year because it's been well, so cold. We're lucky mm. in Tokyo, they've been, they're starting to flutter. Oh, you, down. Yeah, been and gone, yeah. right? Yeah, although yeah. they're still around. Uh, I did go for a final sort of walk up in Aoyama. Uh, Bochi, Aoyama Cemetery, where they're still looking really pretty. Um, so I think by the end of this week, they'll be zilp, but so gorgeous this year. I don't know if it's because it's been so cold, they've decided to come Ooh. out. Really. Yeah, it's been wonderful. Yeah. What's happening is episode two is coming out next Monday. We've been working on it recently and it's looking very good. Looking so, good, isn't it? Mm. You can hear all about our guests' tips for finding and nurturing. A fan base in Japan. Yes, a fan base of really wonderful co um, customers. This particular person has a lot of customers following, I want to say him or her. <laughs> um, you yeah. also hear them talk about them. You also hear them talk about opening up a brick and mortar store during yeah. Goodness me, pandemic, how on earth they did mm. that. And so just a bunch of stories from this person on their, you know, love affair with Japan for all, well, 25 years or so, um, selling Jane, one of our most favourite ever products. Yes, yes, one right. of our favourite products. Yes. <laughs> we, we might be one of their best customers. I'm not sure. Um. <laughs> hmm. And it's not chocolate, so I wonder what mm. it is. You're mm. right. And when we yeah. found that actually that it's not only telling your story, but actually telling consumers what they need, what they want. Um, so, you know, this particular product category has a lot of people who in Japan who are really discerning. But telling them that they should have a particular kind of this product, telling them to eat it or drink it really has been amazing. So please subscribe so that you get this into your ears on Monday, which is Monday, 11 April. Mm, yeah, you can subscribe on podcast players, but also uh, you can join our mailing list. And I would definitely do that because that is where we give all of our subscribers all of the goodies Yay. that we have organized from some of our guests and other uh, New Zealand sort of themed things that are coming down the line. So make sure you're on our subscribe list. You can find that on jandalsinjapan.com. You can sign up there. And, and hey, welcome, Nisha. It's your yeah. first day today in New Zealand. I uh, hope Ooh. you're having a good birthday. You shouldn't be watching us on Instagram. You should be eating cake. But uh, <laughs> you're here. Actually, talking of cakes and something that rhymes with it, quakes. We've all been having rumbly, rumbly quakes in Japan. Mm. It's like we get two in a row, like one, and then a minute later we've got another a quake happening. And someone on the TV the other day was talking about this as a Vanuatu theory. That once okay. there's a theory that mm. there's a quake in Vanuatu, there's also one the day after in Japan, and this has been happening quite a bit. But a scientist said, no, it's just coincidental. It's not related at all. So it's a bit disconcerting, though, I have to say. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> well, these quakes can just keep going and going and going, so it's always just pays to be prepared, doesn't it? And But you have to get on with your life as well. So, yeah, not letting them stop you doing things you want to do. Yeah, yes. not fun at all, especially when you're lying in bed. But the other great news, though, is that visas to come to Japan are now finally being processed. So exciting. Yay. about a trickle, shall we say, at the moment. The taps aren't quite on, but the trickle of our guests, you know, ex exporters from New Zealand coming through now to Japan, getting their visas in their hot little hands to come through. Shall we give a shout out to some, some people who are, who are coming to Japan soon, Catherine? Yeah, I think the guys from Native Sparkling, and they, they've got the lovely Fantail logo that they have on their products. Two brothers who run that business, Native Sparkling, they're coming through to Japan this month. It's so exciting. I can't wait for them to be here. I haven't met Ooh. them personally. I feel like I know them. <laughs> we've had this banter on uh, LinkedIn and yeah, other social yeah. media. 
Yes. Um, hi, Jess. Thanks hi, for joining Jess. us. Thanks for joining yes. us, Jess. And yes. um, so really looking forward to those two brothers coming through from Native Sparkling. And, you know, it's going to be great for them to meet their buyers and distributors and customers on the ground here. Um, obviously, they need um, a sponsor for them to come through to Japan. Everyone getting a visa coming through does need someone on the ground here to be sponsoring them. And, of course, they've got to get a flight, right? They've also mm. got to get to Japan and, and limited numbers of seats on, on planes. So we're right, just talking yes. about the native sparkling boys who are coming through to Japan and I think we're a little bit overly excited about this. It's the first people that we've heard who have been able to come and and we're excited for their product to be launching in Japan soon, hopefully. I think you have got a lot of New Zealand fans here already who are really looking forward to be able to get more of their products. So even though flights I've heard are full, they're full as in full to the cap that has been set by the, mm. the governments, basically, right, coming into Japan and um, getting a seat on a flight has been like hen's teeth. But apparently they're in. So those guys are coming through. We hope to hear of so many other New Zealand exporters coming into Japan soon. Um, we really want to see you here. We're looking forward to it and we've been missing you. So hopefully uh, you can come in very soon. Well, okay. let's continue on and maybe talk about a little bit about Episode one that we had go out two weeks ago. I mean, that was an exceptionally good episode, we think, although we are a bit biased, but it was Don Roxborough, and it was fantastic, Don Roxborough of Wholesome Foods. And, you know, for me, the podcast is, this podcast, Jandals in Japan, is all about resonating with people and connecting with people and inspiring people. And, Jane, we had somebody who was really inspired by Don's episode, and this is exactly what we want, right? So it's a shout-out to Kate, I believe. Yeah, and so Kate yeah. is really inspired by what Don was saying and took a whole lot away from the words that he said, and she's wanting to set up her own business. Whoa, hello, having listened to Don, and I think that's exactly what we want, and we want stories to inspire others. I mean, Japan's such a, I call it like a jigsaw, right, a jigsaw puzzle. All the pieces mm -hmm. are there in the box, right? So it's contained in the box, but some of the pieces start looking the same, like you've got a blue sky on a landscape and all the blue sky pieces all look the same, but they all do come together eventually. And so, you know, how those parts slot together, that's what these people we are interviewing tell us about uh, their stories. And I think the stories bring that Japan jigsaw together. We also had another listener, Vanessa. Uh, Vanessa told us that mm. she thought it was a fantastic kickoff episode. This is our episode one that we had two weeks ago. She said his story, Don's story, so resonated with her. So that mm. was also great. They had things in common. They both exchanged students to Japan as their first experience. Japan wasn't on their radar at first. Um, and then a teacher helped both of them push them into becoming, uh, you know, people who would come into Japan and study here. They both did their study at Kyoto. It sounds like they both were mirroring each other at the same time, but may not have known each other at Maybe the time. Not the same well. year, quite the same year. Yeah. I think they might have missed each other by a year or so. May have missed each other, mm -hmm. yeah. So she yeah. said the podcast was a fascinating listen and um, the idea of market entry for Japan for foreign brands is a very good thing based on real and authentic experiences that uh, people are hearing. And she's got her own podcast too, right, Jane? Vanessa has. Yes, Vanessa's a new podcaster, but a really great show called Outrun Cancer, which I may know a little bit of something about <laughs> to help bring that to the world. <laughs> um, so, yeah, if you're interested in life learnings from running and life learnings from cancer then definitely check out her show okay so episode two we're not telling you who it is to keep a bit of suspense but it is going out uh on monday 11 april or april 11 depending which way you like to say it it's about uh, a person who's importing premium product into japan from new zealand um, this guest also has a really nice special offer for listeners so please do jump on and subscribe so you can hear about that offer and grab it as well yeah, um, NZTE may had a really fantastic webinar today, Made With Care Workshop. My goodness, it was fantastic. If you get on to their website and have a look at the Made With Care information that is there, it's, it's absolutely phenomenal. Um, it was about this campaign that they started in October 2020, and it's about getting food and bev products from New Zealand out into the market when people can't actually come here. Um, they really had so many 
excellent insights. I was taking lots and lots of notes. And I really loved that they invited a whole lot of speakers. Um, and one of the people they brought on was Sam Castles. And I don't know if Sam's listening or we'll shout him out later on. Uh, when this goes on to video, but he talked about two particular things which I thought were really interesting, and that's channels, the way you're talking to people like we are now, Jane, uh, on Facebook and on Instagram, and also about hashtags. I thought hashtags were a little bit um, dead, so um, perhaps it's not true, especially with Japanese. And Cole Cameron's trying to get on, uh, Jack, uh, Jane, <laughs> Jackie Jane, <laughs> Jane, I can see he's trying to get in. But we are live, Cole, so hopefully you can get on. So Sam said that Line, YouTube and Twitter are the three most popular platforms for Japanese people. They're the strongest way to reach customers in Japan. Line is used for inter user interaction, so people talking to each other about products. It's the most popular. Um, then Twitter is also used by consumers in Japan who are learning about products before they go off and do their purchase. So they are actually using Twitter and then YouTube. I know, Jane, your husband uses YouTube quite a lot. Uh, but apparently unboxing videos are the most popular right now. Consumers unboxing what they've bought and telling about their experience online. So I thought that was really cool. And then he added in, this is Sam Castles, who's actually a beachhead advisor for NZTE. He said, you can do hashtags, but be careful how you're using them. Japanese people will search out items by hashtags. They do it five more times, five times more than the average person searching for mm -hmm. a hashtag. So sometimes I think, Jane, we create just hashtag, uh, you know, International Women's Day or hashtag buy my phone or something. But actually, we need to use ones that the Japanese people are using because they are searching by hashtag and they're using Japanese language hashtags as well. So um, that was really brilliant. I loved that workshop. I think it's coming out um, on video later. But if you ever get a chance to see it, it was really, really cool. And you can sign up for the other ones. I'm not here to promote NZTE. NZTE are great. They can do it themselves. But <laughs> because they put so much out there, and we've heard through talking with our guests, they support uh, people on this podcast, our guests who are talking about them. It's important that we all collaborate as a great big New Zealand family uh, here in Japan. And there was one other tip they gave. Yeah, about yeah one more. Yeah. Yeah, it's a real uh, first touch pl platform. We're on it today. Um, consumers learn a lot about brands there. And so I think this is what Jackie is doing, is Jackie is lin linking to a shop from uh, an Instagram platform. And that was really important, um, Sam Castles was saying today, because linking to your e-commerce site from your Insta account, such as you know Spotify, and uh, not Spotify, Shopify, <laughs> the other one, um, it really is key because then customers don't go off to another site, maybe your competitors, they're linking straight through. So perhaps that's an... Uh, logical thing but I thought that was quite cool and I heard the other day that posting things at 11 o'clock in the morning on a Wednesday is the most popular time for Instagram here we go wow who knew 11 o'clock in the morning <laughs> yeah so we are just here online because we love talking to each other but also we want to promote the second episode of Jandals in Japan coming out on Monday 11 April you'll find it on Instagram on Facebook and on LinkedIn. And you can listen to it, of course, on your favorite platform. Your podcast platform might be Apple Podcasts or Spotify, whatever you listen to it on. Please go and find us there. Jane, anything else from you? Thank you so much to everyone who showed up today and listened to us talking <laughs> live. And, yeah, we really hope you'll listen to the episode coming out on Monday. It's such a lot of fun. I can't wait for the the AB, yeah, who's going to come and give us your opinions on our are you A or B and enjoy that episode. Yeah, AB is option A or option B, not all blacks, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> option A or are you A or B, yeah. Yeah, yeah. well, right. it, and it's, it's out on Monday at very early in the morning, isn't it, Jane? Yes, yes, yeah. 3 a.m. Japan time, which is 6 a.m. New Zealand time. Awesome. Yay. Well, Thanks very yes, much. Too. Thanks. Anybody who may have a guest that they'd love to have on the show, please do let us know. We're happy to have anybody on the show who is a jandal in Japan. And if you don't know what a jandal is, you better go find out because um, we're not telling you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think most people know what a jandal is, uh, but we love talking with our jandals in Japan and we look forward to anybody recommending uh, someone who would be a great guest on the show. But that's all from us now. 
Thanks, Thanks for watching. Bye. 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 Thanks for listening. Make sure you check out our guests' links in the show notes. This podcast is brought to you today by Catherine O'Connell Law and Pod Launch with Jane. If you have a great story you think should be on the show, come and find us on LinkedIn or Instagram. We'd love to hear from you. See you next time. Matane.